Imagine waking up one day, twitching and shaking, without knowing why. You'd think there was something wrong with you, wouldn't you? You'd go to the doctor and try and figure out what was wrong, but to your surprise, nothing was wrong with you in the first place. It was all the stress and anxiety that you had been putting on yourself for the past year without rest. That story is exactly what happened to me about two years ago. And after I learned that my stress and anxiety was causing my body to act like that, I started learning how to cope and deal with it on a daily basis. But first, it's important to understand that no one is alone in any of these endeavors. And I have proof of this. The Annie E. Casey Foundation did a study that found about 25% of children have depression, stress, or anxiety. Now, that in itself is not very shocking. What's actually shocking is the age range of that 25%. Children anywhere from ages 3 to 17 years old. Imagine a three-year-old with depression, stress, or anxiety. And that's why today I'm going to help you learn how to cope with your stress and anxiety. Now, when learning to cope and deal with your stress and anxiety, there are three main points to take into consideration. First, you need to try and remove yourself from the situation. Second, you need to be careful with who and what you surround yourself with. And lastly, you need to stay active physically and mentally. Now, let's go back to that first point. You need to try and remove yourself from the situation. Most of the time, it's the situation that's stressful. So simply removing yourself from the situation will greatly reduce your levels of stress and anxiety. For me personally, I will physically move to another spot and sit down, listen to some music, and watch, or watch some funny, wholesome YouTube videos. But everybody is different. Some people may go read a book while others may go play some video games. But what if you can't remove yourself from the situation? For example, what if you're at school and you're taking a big test or you're at an interview for a really big job? You can't really remove yourself from any of those kinds of situations. But there are some other things you can do if you're stuck in any of those kinds of settings. One of my really good teachers, Mr. Pamantuan, told me that simply taking a deep breath can help. And this is very true, as when I was getting ready to give my she talks out in LA, I took a couple of big deep breaths to help calm down, and it helped tremendously. Now, another thing you can do is to remind yourself, or remember, a happy memory or moment in your life. Now, it may not be something that pops to your mind at first, but just remembering a silly little, a silly little moment or a memory can make you giggle or laugh, which will help you lighten up and relax a little bit in whatever the situation is. And another one of my good teachers, Mr. Maddow, told our class that when you're anxious, you're limiting your ability to learn. So another thing you can do is to remind yourself, hey, everything's going to be OK. You're going to be just fine. Now, I know it may be hard to believe that, from whoever it may come from, and trust me, I know exactly how hard it is. But if you have even the smallest bit of faith in those two phrases, it will make you feel so much more relieved, especially if it comes from a close friend or family member. Which brings me to my next point. You need to be careful with who and what you surround yourself with. And you don't need a study to show that you will end up who and what you surround yourself with. Anybody ever heard of the saying garbage in, garbage out? Well, it's actually very much true to this day. Now, it's not just saying don't eat rotten or expired food, although you probably still shouldn't do that. I don't think that's good for you. It's actually talking about relationships or negative situations. The people who you surround yourself with will end up having a major impact on your moods, your mindset, how you see the world, and even your own expectations of yourself. For example, if you surround yourself with mediocrity, you most likely aren't going to make any high goals for yourself or work hard for much in life. But if you surround yourself with greatness and empowerment, you will make those high goals and you will work hard. Let go of those negative relationships and get out of that little comfort zone. Hang out with positive thinkers, dreamers, optimists, intelligent people. I know that, that last one may be kind of hard to find in today's society, but I'm sure there's probably some out there. 
go out there and find your new best friend. I know that this is one of the best things you can possibly do, whether you're stressed, anxious, or even depressed. A few years back, I realized I was stuck in a toxic friendship, and it wasn't until after I had left the situation and that person that I started to find the right people to surround myself with. My really good friend Eloise was one of the first people to ever show me this, and because of her, I've met so many amazing and great people that lift me up instead of putting me down. And I can't thank them enough for all their love and support. They mean the world to me. And the people who you surround yourself with don't necessarily just have to be your friends. They could be a family member or someone you look up to. But you should also be careful with any situations you find yourself in. Things like taking drugs or being on a negative social media. Speaking of social media, that brings me to my next point. Now, how many of you have an iPhone? Those of you who have a Samsung don't have to raise your hand. Now, as I was saying, most people have some sort of electronic device that they use, whether it be a phone, a game console, a TV, a computer, or whatever. We all have used some form of technology in our lives. And in our generation, it's becoming increasingly common to be on social media but it's not always the best thing to turn to when you're stressed or anxious. As the Mayo, Cl Mayo Clinic states, a student who spends more than two hours a day watching TV, playing video games, or using a computer or smartphone are more likely to have social, emotional, and attention problems. Even today, I see this on a regular basis with kids and my friends around me who would rather be scrolling through TikTok on their phones than talk to the person right next to them. Now, I myself love playing video games and want to be a game developer later in life. But I still have to find balance. And I do this by staying active in other things. Staying active in like playing basketball or playing volleyball and going out and hanging out with my friends. As Thomas Kincaid once said, balance, peace, and joy are the fruits of a successful life. And it starts with fight recognizing your talents, and finding ways to serve others by using them. And finally, the best way to help cope with your stress, anxiety, even your depression, is to smile. Now I know what you're thinking. What has smiling got to do with any of this? I'll tell you, I have proof. But first, I want you all to smile until I'm done with my talk. Come on, big smiles, all of you. All of you, big smiles. You there, over there, smile. Now, in the 1980s, there was a German psychologist by the name of Fritz Strack. And now him and his coworkers did an experiment on two groups of people. And both groups were supposed to judge how funny a particular comic book was. But there was a twist. The first group held pencils in their teeth so as to not touch their lips, causing them to take on a happy facial expression. And the second group held pencils in their lips so as to not touch their teeth, causing them to take on a sad facial expression, which looked a little something like this. Now, it turns out that both groups experienced emotions associated with their appearances. The happy group, with the pencil in their teeth, felt happier and judged the comic book as funnier than the sad group with the pencil in their teeth. How are you feeling? Are you all still smiling? Hopefully you feel a little less stressed, anxious, and maybe even a little less depressed. Now, if you remember that girl that I told you about in the beginning, shaking, twitching, and not sure of herself, I now stand here today, strong and unwavering, to know that you can do this too. And as I always say, be you, be a warrior, and most importantly, be a kid. Thank you all for listening.